Hello, this is Dr. Chuck again. Uh, here we're talking in week two of our business research methods analysis. And for this discussion question, what we're going to be talking about is reasoning or sound reasoning, the type of reasoning we may do in research. And in research, this question is about inductive and deductive logic processes or reasoning. And I want to talk about kind of two types of discourse that there are. There's exposition where we expound, we talk about things we know, things we think we know, and in the exposition there's not really argument. Now exposition may have come about through sound reason and an argument, and now it's become a presupposition, and we then use it as an exposition. But outside of that, the next term for part of our types of discourse would be argument. And argument isn't heated argument, it doesn't necessarily mean we're fighting with someone, it's when we are trying to reason something through, find an answer for something, maybe have a disagreement with someone, and we use argument in the research process. And in that argument phase, we have both deductive and inductive reasoning processes. So this discussion question is asking you about inductive and deductive reasoning processes. I'm going to talk about the deductive reasoning first. Deductive processes are when we have a, a premise uh, a presupposition or a premise, something that seems to be true, and another fact that seems to be true, and the conclusion that we get from both of these premises, a major a major premise and a minor premise, tends to lead to a, a conclusion that's valid, if the premises are themselves valid or if the premises are related together in a valid sense. An example would be, here at Davenport, I could say that this is a... a uh, the, this course that I'm teaching is an MBA course. I can then say, so there's my premise. My next premise is that you're a student in this course. Therefore, it naturally follows that you are an MBA student. There's a natural flow of progression that the conclusion comes from the two premises. Again, that's an assumption that the premises are correct and valid. I could be teaching, I teach undergraduate classes at other universities. I could be making a mistake in saying that this is an MBA course, you're one of my students, therefore you're an MBA student. And yet it's really not an MBA course that I'm teaching, but a bachelor's level course. And therefore, even though from that argument the, the conclusion naturally follows, it may still not be valid because there was something wrong with the premise or the present premise was wrong. Um, I'll give you another example of deductive reasoning. Household interviewing is especially difficult and expensive. So if you go in, you do some research in an inner city, you spend a lot of time talking to people, collecting data, becoming part of that, it becomes difficult and expensive. And then I say this survey involves substantial inner city household interviewing. So we know that that type of research is expensive. The survey I'm giving you requires that type of research. Therefore, the interviewing in this survey will be especially expensive. So that's a deductive logic process. Now induction in a lot of the scientific method follows an inductive process and that is asking why. Um, let me give an example. Why didn't sales increase during our promotional event? Well it may be because regional retailers did not have sufficient stock to fill customer requests during the promotional, promotional period or a strike by employees prevented stock from arriving in time for the promotion to be effective or a hurricane closed retail outlets in the region for 10 days during the promotion. So an inductive process is when we take particular events and we try and extrapolate those to a population. I may uh, have a teacher and there's a class and I'm a dean and I realize that a teacher's got, uh, it's taught four classes and every student in the class always gets an A. I can assume that all the students are great or the teacher always gives A's. And so my next class, because I've seen A's, I'll just maybe assume that the next class all the students will get A's. Now that's not necessarily true, it's not an inductive process, it's an inductive process. I may go to a foreign land and see blackbirds everywhere. All I see is blackbirds. And so I assume, wow, in this city, in this town, all the birds are black. But there could be a white one out there, I just haven't found it yet. So that's an inductive process. Now in research you will use both or can use both inductive and a deductive process. Uh, one of the examples would be why didn't sales increase? So you know fact one, we promote a product but sales do not increase. So the inductive method would be why? 
I may come up with a lot of reasons, do a needs assessment to try and determine why the sales did not increase. From that, I may form a hypothesis that says the promotion was poorly executed. So my deduction, now I can do a deductive argument from there and say, ineffective promotion will not increase sales. That's led to we promote a product. So again, look at the hypothesis. The promotion was poorly executed. Ineffective promotion will not increase sales. Therefore, sales will not increase. That was a deductive. So we have induction and deduction. Another fact could be we run an effective promotion and sales increase. My deduction from there, again, a promotion was poorly executed. Effective promotion will increase sales. So there we see in here we have induction and deduction. Another example, uh, we'll talk about Tracy's performance. Tracy has a poor performance record. So there's my fact, there's my, my problem. Inductive reasoning or research would be why. I will come up with different reasons why, and I may form a hypothesis that now I want to test. And that hypothesis says Tracy is lazy. Well, through deductive argument, Tracy is lazy. Laziness results in excessive tardiness. Therefore, I can automatically conclude that Tracy is regularly late for work. Or another, the same hypothesis, major premise, Tracy is lazy. The deduction would be laziness results in fewer customer calls per day. And then, of course, the logical conclusion would be Tracy makes fewer calls per day than the average salesperson. So from here, do some external research. Three other sources, I guess, is what I require. Use a text, do some research. Think about the inductive process, the deductive process, where they're important, where they pertain, how they're going to affect your research process, and maybe even how you use those in your, in your life. We'll talk about theory in this class, about hypothesis in this class, and the reasoning methods we may use, again, is induction and deduction. So that's what this discussion question is about. I hope you have a little bit better understanding of what induction and deduction is. Thank you very much.